Hello and welcome to a follow-up video to my previous comparison video on digital microscopes. There's a few aspects of that video that I'd like to elaborate on. In this video, I'll go over a brief recap on the previous video before diving in, including going over a few definitions to make sure we're all on the same page. Then, I'll be doing a deeper dive on the images that each microscope captured. First, here's a little bit about me and why I'm interested in digital microscopes in the first place. Starting in 2018, I've been going down the integrated circuit rabbit hole. I've been taking apart electronics and extracting the silicon chips from inside various components. On Instagram, I started the Components Close-Up series, where I photograph these various silicon chips and other components with my microscope. I also enjoy posting short videos showing the extraction process. In some of these posts, I include the magnification that was used to take the video. The main reason I made the digital microscope comparison video in the first place was to help other people wanting to look at chips under the microscope. I've been worried that if someone used the magnification numbers in my videos as a reference point for their own microscope, they may be tricked by the overly exaggerated numbers on these digital microscopes. My thought process was to use my optical microscope with a known magnification and use it as a reference to compare against a variety of digital microscopes. This would allow me to either confirm or disprove the digital microscope's listed specifications. It's important to note that I am by no means an expert on the subject of microscopy. I'm just some guy that's been looking at chips with a microscope. Before we go further here in the video, I think it's important to define a few terms so that we're all on the same page. First up is magnification. According to the Oxford Dictionary, magnification is defined as the action or process of magnifying something or being magnified, especially visually. The degree to which something is or can be magnified, or the magnifying power of an instrument. These three definitions all include magnifying or magnified, the root of which is magnify. The definition for magnify is to make something appear larger than it is, especially with a lens or a microscope. Optical microscopes, as the name suggests, use optics to magnify an image. This image is usually formed in your eye when you look into the microscope's eyepiece. The digital microscopes that I've looked at also use optics, but they are much less complex and simplistic. The optics used in a digital microscope instead focus the image directly onto an included image sensor. The image sensor then converts the light it sees into a digital image that can be viewed digitally with an external computer or an attached monitor. Complementary to magnification is the term resolution. Resolution can be defined as the smallest interval measurable by a scientific, especially optical, instrument the resolving power. This can also refer to the degree of detail visible in a photographic or television image. While zooming into an image does technically meet some of the definition for magnification, it comes at a cost. The cost of resolution. Digitally zooming into an image taken with a microscope does not increase the resolution or allow you to resolve finer details. The overall resolution decreases as you increase the magnification digitally. Hopefully this point will become clearer in the next section. In the previous video, I used a microscope calibration slide as one of my tests to determine the apparent magnification of each digital microscope. I compared the results of each digital microscope to my optical microscopes, which have a known magnification. Some of you suggested that I should have compared the photos taken against one another, so let's do that now. I started by opening up everyone's favorite open source SVG software, Inkscape. I then drag and dropped a photo taken from each digital microscope and camera that I have into the Inkscape project. I set the import image DPI to from file and the rendering mode was set to none for each image. Let's start with the 0.3 megapixel sensor digital microscopes. From my teardowns, I know that the Shiri and Oxbird both use the same sensor, so it's no surprise that they look similar. Making sure that the display units are set to pixels, I can confirm that these are 640 by 480 photos. Based on the comparison from the previous video, I determined that this microscope produces images at roughly 100 times magnification. That means our starting values for magnification are 100x and for resolution, 640 
by 480p. Let's double the magnification and see what happens. Doubling the magnification increases it to 200 times, but decreases the resolution by half to 240p. Next, I'll increase the magnification by 2.5 times. This results in an image with an effective magnification of 500x and reduces the resolution further to just 96 pixels vertically. I'll double it once more to get to 1000 times magnification. Increasing the magnification 10 times has also reduced the resolution 10x. Our final image is very blurry and not well defined. For comparison, if I import the image as blocky, you can see the individual pixels at this level. And zooming in even further, this becomes more obvious. Moving on to the Oxbird, it's essentially identical to the Shiri microscope. The same can't be said for the Kanda microscope, which even though it's 0.3 megapixels, it looks slightly worse. After zooming in, the image looks very fuzzy and is kind of gross. I could say the same thing about the Anlov microscope, which although it uses the same 0.3 megapixel sensor, the image is 720p. Zooming in yields a similar gross image to the previous one. The next image is a pretty big step, jumping all the way up to 8.3 megapixels. This image is from the 4K Wi-Fi digital microscope and measures in at 3840 by 2160 pixels. Unfortunately though, this 4K microscope only has about 50 times magnification internally. This means that even though there are more pixels available, many of them are wasted when trying to photograph the calibration slide. Zooming in yields a blurry mess, and arguably the worst image so far. The last digital microscope from the previous video is the Tomlov, with its claimed 16 megapixel sensor. This particular sensor yields an image of 5,376 by 3,024 pixels. This microscope is also limited to about 50 times internal magnification. With the help of the added pixels though, we can still make out some decent detail zooming in digitally, with more definition in the lines compared to all of the other digital microscopes. Something that I did find interesting zooming into this image was that even though the import optimization was set to none, the image still appears pixelated. Next, I'll compare the digital microscopes to my dedicated microscope camera, the Omax A35 180U3 18 megapixel USB 3.0 camera. This camera uses an Aptina AR1820 color CMOS image sensor, allowing it to take photos at a resolution of 4912 by 3684 pixels. The camera has C-mount threads and comes with a C-mount to 23mm reduction lens. With this adapter installed, it can be inserted into any 23mm microscope camera tube. Here's what the pictures look like when installed into the metallurgical microscope. This picture was taken with the microscope set to 100 times magnification. The tick marks aren't black in this image thanks to the illumination of the metallurgical microscope. It's also possible to zoom and still maintain definition between the lines. Eventually, after zooming in far enough though, you can start to see the individual pixels. For this comparison, I also wanted to include photos that I take with my Samsung Galaxy S21 Ultra. I mount my phone to this smartphone scope adapter, which makes it really easy to get the camera lined up with the eyepiece. I usually use the main camera, which can be set to take 12 megapixel photos. Here's a photo taken at 100 times magnification. 12 megapixels results in an image of 4000 by 3000 pixels. Even though this image is smaller than the 18 megapixel image from the Omax, it's still pretty good when you zoom in. That being said, zooming in doesn't seem to yield as pixelated of an image as the Omax. Everything appears smoothly blended together. I believe that this has something to do with the algorithm that the phone does every time it takes a photo. Even though this image is 12 megapixels, the image sensor inside the camera is actually a whopping 108 megapixels, the Samsung Isocell HM3. Luckily, the phone allows us to take images at that resolution. Here's what it looks like. This 108 megapixel image equates to 12,000 by 9,000 pixels. The image can be zoomed into very far and maintains a great deal of detail. That brings up a very interesting question. If you have a high enough resolution and you zoom into it, 
can you see more as if you took the photo with a higher magnification? It took these four images with the 108 megapixel sensor at different magnification levels. Here's what they each look like by themselves. This is the 50 times. Here's the 100 times magnification photo, the 200 times magnification photo, and the 500 times magnification photo. To help give perspective for each of these images, I can overlay them all on top of the 50x image. For example, the 100x image is in pink. You can see that even though the magnification doubled, the actual area it takes is about one-fourth the size of the 50x image. The same thing can be said about the 200x image compared to 100x. This means the 500x image is one one-hundredth the original size of the 50x. If the original image is 12,000 by 9,000 pixels, that means that an image one one-hundredth the size would be 1,200 by 900 pixels. There's still quite a bit of detail missing compared to the native 500x image. Similarly, if I start with the 100x image and increase it to 500x, the resulting image is larger, but still not big enough to resolve the finer details. For comparison, here's the digital microscope images normalized to 500x. There definitely is a benefit to using a higher resolution sensor, but there is an upper limit. One more comparison that I'll do in this video will be between a 0.3 megapixel image and the 18 megapixel image from the Omax camera. Here's the 100 times magnification image from the Omax camera. And here's the 0.3 megapixel image from the Oxford. In each dimension, the 0.3 megapixel image fits roughly 7.75 times. Compared to the 640x480p image, the 18 megapixel image has 60 times more pixels. The 0.3 megapixel image can be enlarged to match the size of the 18 megapixel image. It should be noted that enlarging the image this way does not increase the overall magnification. The magnification still remains essentially at 100 times the same as the Omax image. Basically, displaying the 0.3 megapixel image on a larger screen does not increase the magnification of the image. To reiterate the biggest point that you should take away from this video, the overall resolution of an image decreases as you increase the magnification digitally. Before I end the video, let's take a closer look at my two optical microscopes. This is the SM4TZ-144A from Amscope. The integrated double boom arm on this microscope makes adjusting it to the perfect position super easy. This microscope has a knob that is used to adjust the magnification from 0.7 all the way up to 4.5 times. Combine this with the 2x Barlow and a 10x eyepiece, the maximum magnification this microscope can achieve out of the box is 90 times. The head of the microscope can also be moved and adjusted into almost any position. I found this surprisingly useful when trying to film component decaps under the microscope. I also installed a dedicated phone mount to this microscope and taped the eyepiece to the rest of the microscope to prevent the phone from rotating at extreme angles. To use a camera with this microscope, you sacrifice one of the eyepieces to divert the image to the camera tube. Both of my microscopes have the same 23mm camera mount tube. This microscope does have shortcomings for chip photography, which is why I also purchased this metallurgical microscope. This microscope is also from Amscope, and it's the ME580TA-PZ-2L. I've made a few modifications to this microscope in an attempt to automate it, but there's a lot to go over, so that will be the subject of another future video. With the included objectives and eyepieces, this microscope achieves a range of magnification from 40 to 800 times, with fixed steps in between. The XY stage of the microscope is controlled with two knobs, and on my automated setup is driven by two stepper motors. There are also two knobs for the focus, a coarse and a fine, and the fine is currently fitted with another stepper motor. The coarse adjustment knob is very useful when switching between objectives and and for larger specimens. The dash 2L portion of the model number indicates that this is a dual illumination microscope. The light source 
source can either be from underneath to look through translucent objects or from the top to look at opaque ones. I use the top light source the most often and it comes from this box. It travels down a tube with a series of filters in it before eventually reaching the specimen below. The light from the specimen is reflected back up to the eyepieces or the camera tube. I use the microscope pretty often and I was going through quite a few of the halogen light bulbs. I designed an LED replacement and at this point it's got a few hundred hours on it and it's working out great. The design uses a single high power LED to mimic the single point light source of the halogen bulb. I'm also working on a video that goes into more detail about the LED module. If you made it this far in the video, I wanted to express my sincere gratitude. I didn't expect the previous video to do as well as it did, and because of it, I've been able to monetize on YouTube. This will help with future videos and makes it easier to justify some of the more expensive purchases. The biggest way to help out the channel, if you haven't already, is to make sure you're subscribed here on YouTube. There's also an additional paid subscription on my Instagram that unlocks additional weekly content. You can also check out my online web store, which has silicon wafers, PCB coins, and a bunch of other stuff. Or you can join the Discord and see what I'm working on in between videos. Thanks again for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.